Hello everyone. Good day. So we're here with a, a trial exercise or a sample exercise for regarding trial balances and adjusting entries. So hello sa mga students ko from 12 ABMs 1, 5, 6, 7, 11 and 13. And syempre dun sa mga hindi ko naman handle na students na nandito, hello din sa inyo. Kahit tiga USC kayo kahit hindi. Okay? So, sa mga nanonood dito, if meron kayong mga kakilala na, you know, medyo nagsastruggle sa accounting, baka naman makatulong to. Okay? Since libre naman siya, nothing to lose. Okay? So, ayun. Actually, pre-promise ko to sa mga students ko. Sorry, ngayon lang. Ngayon lang kasi talaga ako nagkaroon ng time para i-prepare to. Anyway, nandito naman na. So, let's get it on. Okay? So, we have here a problem. Uh, kung makikita nyo dito, ayan. Um, trial balance, and then there are additional information, and of course, these additional informations, this additional information pertains to the adjusting, the adjusting entries that we are going to do a little bit later on. Okay? So, sige, let's start with, of course, the trial balance. So, pop a saka. Pop pa saka. Okay, so, tandaan nyo guys, sabay-sabay tayo yung papasa dito. So, yun, Papi Saka Services, trial balance as of December 31, 2019. And cash, account receivable, allowance for bad debts, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, accumulated depreciation, and so on and so forth. So, the first thing that we have to do here is that we have to check, we have to check if the normal balances are correct. Okay, so... We're going to have to take a look at our assets. Cash, AR. These are both assets. So, ang normal balance ng asset is debit. So, makikita nyo naman dito, nasa debit siya. So, this is correct. Our next problem will then be with allowance for bad debts. So, if you, as you all know, allowance for bad debts is a contra-asset account. Okay? And... The normal balance of an asset, as I said earlier, is debit. And since allowance for bad debts is a contra-asset account, this should be found on the credit side. So, punta muna tayo dito sa ating solution. Okay. Wait lang. Okay, here. So, I'm going to... Okay, yung kanina kasi naka-PDF yun, so hindi ko siya may edit. So, ito yung magiging solution natin. As you can see, meron na akong na-prepare na tatlong sheets. So, mag-focus muna tayo dito sa trial balance. So, as I was saying earlier, allowance for bad debt should be on the credit side. So, alisin natin siya sa debit, ilipat natin siya sa credit. Why are we doing this? Guys, ang normal balance ng allowance for bad debts is credit. So, it should be seen on the credit side. So, in this case, nabigyan tayo ng incorrect trial balance. You have to remember that there is a difference between an incorrect and an incomplete trial balance. Okay? Although, in some ways, pareho lang naman siya. Kasi, syempre, if, you, if it is incomplete, incorrect na din siya. Okay? What I'm saying is, incorrect in a sense na yun nga. Yung ginawa natin, there are some balances that are on the wrong side. Okay? So, yung ibang credit, nasa debit. Yung ibang debit, dapat nasa credit. So, that's what I mean when I say incorrect. Kasi, pag incomplete lang naman yung trial balance, all we have to do is to what? We just have to adjust. So, after ng adjusting entries, once we apply the adjusting entries, the incomplete trial balance or the unadjusted trial balance will then become the complete or the adjusted trial balance. Okay? So, let's continue. Supplies is an asset. Tama, nasa debit siya. Prepaid insurance is also an asset. So, nasa debit. Equipment is an asset, pero hindi nakabigay yung amount niya. So, okay lang. Hindi natin alam. Accumulated depreciation is also an, what? It is a, it is a contra asset account. So, this is a contra-asset for PPE. So, ano ba yung PPE natin dito? PPE means property, plant, and equipment. So, obviously, yung PPE natin dito is equipment. So, accumulated de this accumulated depreciation account pertains to the equipment. And this should be found on the credit side. So, ililipat natin. 
Okay? So, I think that's it for our asset accounts. So, let's now proceed to our liability accounts. So, accounts payable, notes payable, and unearned income. These are all liabilities. Guys, you have to remember that unearned income, unearned revenue is a liability account which is payable through the performance of services. Tama? Or through the sale of goods. Kasi yung unearned income, review lang, ito yung payment, the payment to us came first before the performance of the service or the delivery of the good, whatever is applicable. Okay, so nakatanggap na tayo ng pera pero wala pa tayong naibibigay na kapalit. So, unearned pa yun, hindi pa natin siya kinikita. So, nasa atin na yung pera pero it's as if hindi pa talaga siya sa atin. Now, once maibigay na natin yung kapalit, this unearned income will then be or will then form part of our income. Okay? So, tama naman yung tatlo nasa credit side since the normal balance of a liability is credit. Now, let's go to our equity account. So, meron tayong dalawa dito. We have your capital, which is not given. Tama, dapat nasa credit yan. And yung drawing. Drawing should be found on the debit side. Why? The effect the drawing has on our equity is indirect. Which means, kapag meron tayong drawing, bumababa yung equity natin. So, habang tumataas yung drawing natin, or yung withdraw withdrawals, bumababa yung ating equity. And the normal balance of equity is credit. So, since drawing deducts from equity, it should be found in the, or on the debit side. Okay? So, next we have here, service income. So, income na tayo. There, there's only one income account here in the trial balance and it is rightfully on the credit side. Now, we go to the last major account which are the expenses. So, we have three. Utilities expense, salaries expense, taxes and licenses. Guys, I would just like to reiterate that not all account titles without the name expense is not an expense account. So, and what do I mean when I say that? Tignan nyo tong taxes and licenses. Meron ba kayo nakikitang word na expense? Di ba? Wala. Pero, hindi ibig sabihin nun na walang word na expense ay hindi na siya expense account. And, on the other hand, hindi porket merong word na expense sa account title niya ay considered na siya as an expense account. Let me give you an example. Prepaid expense. Actually, meron tayong prepaid expense dito. Here. Prepaid insurance is a type of a prepaid expense. Prepaid expense is considered an asset. So, you have to remember, guys. Hindi porket merong word na expense, expense account na siya. And hindi porket walang expense sa account title niya, hindi na siya expense account. So, you have to know. Okay? You have to know. So, dapat alam yan. Kailangan nyo yan aralin. Okay? So, uh, as you all know, expenses have a normal balance or have a de has a uh, dapat ang normal balance niya is debit so it should be found on the debit side okay so with this done okay na mukhang okay na yung trial balance natin so meron din ako dito i don't i think na mention ko na i have a sheet for adjusting entries and a sheet for t accounts so since we adjusted the the trial balance it's just right that we adjust the t account so guys um I took the liberty of preparing this beforehand para medyo mabilis na yung flow ng pagtuturo dito, yung tutorial. Uh, you can always pause or rewind the video if ever nabibilisan kayo or kailangan nyo makahabol. You just need to pause, catch up, and then resume the video. Okay? So, ang mapinalitan natin is this one. Nilagay natin sa credit, allowance for bad debts. What else? Accumulated depreciation, nilagay din natin sa credit. And then, ah, yung withdrawals or yung drawing, kailangan ilagay natin to sa debit. Okay? And then lastly, yung mga expense accounts, dapat sila ay nasa debit side. Okay. So, na-effect na natin sa ating uh, trial balance as well as sa ating T-accounts. I think... We can now go to our adjusting entries. Okay, so, hindi nyo pala nakita yung ginawa ko. Okay, I'm sorry. So, ganito lang yan. 
Ito na. Ito na siya. Ito na yung inadjust ko na kanina actually dapat nandito ako sa window na to pero I'm sorry pero ito makikita niyo na yung adjustments na ginawa ko. Ang ginawa lang natin is nilipat lang natin yun nga yung allowance for bad debts nilipat natin sa credit yung drawing nilipat natin sa debit and then yung utility yung mga expenses nilipat natin sa debit. Okay? And then sa mga T-accounts na nandito ayan. So nakaayos na din siya. Okay? So ayusin ko lang to wait lang. Ayan. So, the T-account is in accordance with the trial balance. So, now let's go to the adjusting entries. So, balik muna tayo ulit sa ating problem. Uh, okay, let's move down here. And then, okay. The accountant, for the first uh, transaction here, for the first information given, the accountant mistakenly recorded a 150,000 service performed as cash which in fact is yet to be paid as of the balance sheet date. So what happened here? Ang nangyari dito guys, yung totoong nangyari is, nag-perform tayo ng service, pero hindi pa tayo nababayaran. Okay? Nag-perform ng service, pero unpaid. Okay? The accountant recorded, akala nung accountant, nabayaran na. So nag-record ng cash si accountant which in fact dapat naka-record siya as accounts receivable. So what will be our adjusting entry? So this for letter A. So kailangan natin gawin is we have to add to AR. Tama? Dagdagan natin yung AR and then bawasan natin yung cash. So how do we do that? We debit accounts receivable and then we credit cash. Okay, 150,000. Okay, oh, wait lang. Iyan na lang natin to. Ayaw niya. Okay, anyway, anyway. Sige. Um, so, feeling ko naman na gets nyo yun. So, I think we can move on to the next uh, next information given. Uh, by the way, guys, balik muna ako dito pala. So, normally kasi sa mga tinuturo, tinuturo ko sa students ko is idiretsyo na namin sa T-account. So, ang magiging itsura nun will be instead na mag-journal entry pa, so, idiretsyo na dito. So, debit AR 150, so, dito papasok yon 150,000. And then, credit cash na 150,000. So, ganyan. Pero, iwan muna natin yan for now. Let's focus first on the adjusting entries. So, gawin muna natin to lahat. And then, saka natin siya ilipat sa T-accounts. Okay? So, the second one is, ano sabi? Accountant recorded a 52,000 payment for salaries as 25,000. So, this is an example of a transposition error. Transposition, ibig sabihin, nagkapalit yung pwesto ng dalawang digits. So, ano ba tama? Ang nangyari talaga is, nagbayad tayo ng 52,000 sa sweldo. Okay? 52,000 sa para pang sweldo natin. Pero, ang na-record lang ng accountant is 25,000. So, napagbalit, napagbaliktad niya yung pwesto ng 5 and ng 2. So, since ang record lang natin 25 na dapat 52, so we have to add to the recording. Tama? So the entry should be what? So letter B. Siyempre, since nagpasweldo tayo sa mga employees, salaries, expense yan. Debit salaries, expense, and then credit cash. How much? Ang dapat na na-record is 52. Ang na-record lang is 25. So, kulang tayo ng 27,000. So, we record here 27,000. Okay? Sige. Now, let's go to letter C. The accountant failed to record the purchase of supplies for 3,000. So, this is kind of simple. Meron tayong biniling supplies na hindi natin na-record. Once again, tingin tayo sa problem. 
Okay, hindi naman sinabi na on account, hindi naman sinabi na inutang. So, we assume that this was paid immediately. So, we have to debit supplies and we have to credit cash for 3,000 pesos. Oops. Supplies. What's happening? Cash. 3,000 pesos. Okay. Sige. Ito na yan. Okay, hindi ko na naman nalipat. Pero ito, as you can see here. Okay. And then, let's now go to letter D. So, ang sabi, 75% of total accounts receivable is estimated to be uncollectible. Okay. So, uncollectible yun. Okay, now, balik tayo sa ating trial balance. Okay, look here. Accounts receivable here is 550,000. So, labas ko lang yung calculator. Okay, dito na lang siya. So, 550,000 times, sabayan times, times, 0.075 is... 41,250. Okay? 41,250. Is that correct? Okay? Hindi yun tama, guys. Why? Kasi, remember, na sa first adjusting entry natin, in-adjust natin yung accounts receivable. So, now, if we go to the T-accounts, ang unadjusted balance ng AR natin is 550. But, due to our adjusting entry, nagdebit tayo ng 150,000 kay AR. Meaning, nadagdagan si AR. So, ang adjusted balance ni AR will be okay, 700,000. So, 700,000 na dapat ang ating accounts receivable. Uh, what does that mean? So, ibig sabihin, 700,000 dapat yung basihan ng 7.5% na sinasabi dito. Okay? 7.5% of total AR. So, the, the total AR is pertaining to 700,000 and not uh, and not 500,000. So, sige, solve natin dito. Uh, 700,000 times 0.075 Okay, the answer is 52,000 500. So, dapat daw, ito na yung correct balance ng allowance for bad debts. The allowance for bad debts should be equal to 52,500. Okay? So, punta tayo ngayon sa T-accounts. Okay. Allowance for bad debts currently, punta tayo sa trial balance pala, allowance for bad debts currently has a balance of 16,500. 16,500 currently ang balance niya. Dapat maging 52,500. So, how do we solve for that? So, dapat dito sa ending balance niya should be 52,500. Okay? So, ang ibig sabihin, we have to add we have to add to our allowance for bad debts. Magkano ang kailangan nating i-add? So, 52,500 minus 16,500. We have to add 36,000 pesos to our allowance for bad debt. So, ibig sabihin, 36,000 na lang ang kailangan nating i-record. So, what would be our record? Of course, your record would be debit, bad debts, expense, and credit allowance for bad debts. For 36,000. Okay? Sir, bakit ganyan? Bakit ganyan? Once again, nagdagdag tayo sa credit ng ABD. So, kung makikita nyo dito, credit ABD. Sir, bakit ganon? Nagdagdag tayo sa credit dito, pero wala naman tayong dinagdag sa debit. Okay, if that is your question, you are correct. Kasi, remember, nagdebit din tayo ng bad debts expense. So, Kung makikita natin, ito, ito yung, mga, ito yung mga income accounts natin, income and expense accounts, wala tayong bad debts expense dito. 
Correct? So, all we have to do is, we have to create another T account. So, gawa lang ako. Okay. Uh, bad debts expense. BDE. So, dito, ang magiging ano niya is 36,000. Okay? So, ito na yun. Uh, ito yung debit. Once again, guys, ah, debit, bad debts expense, credit allowance for bad debts. Oh, ano yung reflection niya sa T-account? Debit, bad debts expense, credit, allowance for bad debts na 36,000. So, kung makikita nyo, dapat balance lang talaga. Kasi, meron kang dinebit, meron kang credit of the same amount. Okay? So, sige, tuloy natin. Letter E. What is letter E? Uh, a year-end count of supplies revealed that 57,000 of supplies were used for the year. So, ano yun? 57,000 of supplies were used for the year. Nagamit. 57,000 daw yung nagamit. Hin minsan kasi, guys, the given is yung natitira. Okay? In that case, kung yung natitira yung binigay, Yung amount na yun will be your adjusted balance. But in this case, um, ang binigay sa atin is yung amount na nagamit. So, ibig sabihin, ang binigay sa atin is the adjustment. Okay? So, what would be our entry? Simply, uh, punta tayo dito. Ayan. So, of course, since nagamit mo na, debit, supplies, expense, and then you credit supplies for 57 okay bale supplies 57,000 okay so we're done with letter E okay now let's go to letter F so ano ba yung letter F um as of year end, only three only three fourths of the prepaid insurance is still to be consumed. Oh, tulad nito. Okay? Only three fourth of prepaid insurance is still to be consumed. Ibig sabihin nun, three fourth pa yung natitira. Okay? Three fourths pa yung natitira. Now let's check the trial balance. Prepaid insurance is two hundred thousand. So consult natin yung calculator. Uh, 200,000 since uh, four, uh, denominator niya is 4, we divide this by 4. So, ang 1 fourth is equal to 50,000. Since 3 fourths yung natitira, ibig sabihin, 1 fourth yung nagamit. So, itong 50,000 na to will be our adjustment. Okay? Ito yung nagamit na sa prepaid insurance. Kasi ang natitira na lang daw sa prepaid insurance, 3 fourth eh. Ibig sabihin, itong 50,000, ito yung nagamit. So, how do we do that? Adjusting entries, letter F. So, the correct entry would be uh, debit, insurance, expense, and then credit, prepaid insurance for the amount of 50,000 pesos. Okay? So, okay. Stop muna tayo. Ah, dyan muna tayo. Now, let's proceed to letter G. Uh, letter G. Ayan, equipment. The equipment was purchased on July 1, 2017. Had a salvage value of 250000 and a useful life of 10 years. So, ano yun? Normally, kapag ganitong information yung binigay, guys, uh, what we usually have to do is we have to find for the depreciation uh, to be recorded for the year. Okay? So, first, we have to look at the trial balance. Okay? So, meron ng accumulated depreciation. So, does this mean that meron na tayong na-record na depreciation for the year? The answer is no. Okay, the answer is no. Why not? Remember, guys, accumulated depreciation is a contra-asset account. It is also a 
real account. So, ano ba yung real accounts? These are accounts that carry over from year to year. So, ito yung nagkikerry over, hindi ito nagiging zero. So, it is very possible na itong 375,000 na to is the depreciation for the past years. It's very possible. Actually, in this case, yun talaga ang nangyari. Why is that? Meron ba tayong nakikitang depreciation expense account titles? Hindi. Wala. Wala tayong nakikita. That just means na hindi pa nagre-record ng depreciation for 2019. Okay? For the year for this year, wala pa tayong nare-record na depreciation. Okay? Balik tayo sa information na binigay. Uh, the equipment was purchased on July 1, 2017. Okay? Ibig sabihin nito, guys, as I said earlier, wala pa tayong nare-record as of 2019. Uh, this just means that yung accumulated depreciation na nakikita natin sa trial balance, ito, itong 375,000, okay, itong nakikita nyo to, this is only until December 31, 2018. Oh, tama? Kasi hindi pa nga tayo nagre-record for 2019. Paano, sir, paano nga ulit nalaman na hindi tayo nagre-record for 2019? Kasi wala pang depreciation expense na nasa trial balance. If ever na meron kang depreciation expense dito, ibig sabihin, may na-record ka na for this year. Okay? Since wala, it's safe to assume na you have yet to record depreciation for this year. Which means that this accumulated depreciation is from July 1, 2017 up until December 31, 2018. So, you have to count. Ilang buwan yun? From July 1, 2017 to December 31, 2018. So, if I'm counting correctly, that is equal to one and a half year or 18 months. So, this accumulated depreciation now is good for 18 months. Magagamit ba natin yon? Of course. Calculate. 375,000 divided by 18. Okay. Medyo pangit yung lumabas na value. So, wait lang ha. Titignan natin kung, kung ganun nga talaga. Kasi kung ganun talaga, wala tayong magagawa. Okay, uh, 2017, 2018. Tama. Tingnan natin yung balance dito. Oh, 2019 eh. So, 12. Diba? 12, year, 12 months in a year. And then 6 months. July, August, September, October, November, December. So yes, that is correct. So what we computed for is correct. Um... So, ito yung magiging depreciation natin per month. Okay? 20,833.3333. Yan yung per month. Now, we have to multiply this by how much? We have to multiply... Oh, sorry. What happened? Okay. Uh, ulitin ko na lang nga. 375,000. Divided by 18 months. Dapat nakikita nyo yung amount. Okay, 375 divided by 18 is 20,833.33. This one is, ulat natin dito, okay? Uh, 20,833.3333 per month. So, per month yan. Okay? Now, we have to record for the year. So, we simply have to multiply this by 12. So, we get, okay, ito medyo maganda yung labas. We get 250,000. So, ibig sabihin daw, guys, every year, 250,000 per year. So, every year, nagre-record siya ng depreciation expense na 250,000. Okay? Now, just to check, just to check. Yung sinabi natin earlier, this accumulated depreciation is from July 1, 2017 to December 31, 2018. 
Once again, that is one and a half year. Okay, one and a half years yun. So, yung 250,000 per year, try natin siyang i-multiply ng 1.5. So, nagbabalance naman siya, nagtutugma siya. One, year, one and a half year siyang nagamit, yung depreciation for one and a half year is 375, yun naman yung nakarecord. Okay? So, since na-compute na natin to, all we have to do is, we have to adjust. Okay, letter G. So, to record depreciation, we have depreciation, expense, and then we have accumulated depreciation for 250,000 pesos each. Okay, so guys, that would be your Q. Okay, yun ang titignan nyo. Always, kapag wala pang depreciation expense sa ating trial balance, you assume na hindi pa nagre-record ng depreciation for that year. Next step is, bibilangin nyo hanggang kailan lang nag-record. Okay, hanggang kailan pa lang yung record niya. So now, you have to count from the date of the purchase up until the last recording date. Okay, and then i-divide nyo kung ilan yung time na yun. Kung 2 years ba yun, in this case, 1 and a half years. So, dinivide natin siya by 1.5. Okay? Sige, I think we can proceed to letter H. Okay, letter H. Uh, a promissory note was issued by the company last January 1, 2018. So, last year pa yan. Remember, this year, 2019 tayo, okay? And is payable in three equal annual installments. Interest is to be paid along with these installments. With these installments. The trial balance represents the amount of notes payable after the second payment has been made. Okay. So guys, sige natin to, ah. Promissory note was issued by the company. So tayo daw yung nagbigay. Ibig sabihin, tayo yung may utang. Okay? So, let's check. Notes payable. Okay, ito yun. Was issued by the company last and is payable in three equal annual install. Uy, medyo ano to ah. Medyo iba to. Kasi kapag dinivide natin siya by three, hindi siya magiging equal. Oh well, oh well. Okay lang. Kaya natin yan. Kaya natin yan. Okay. So, ibig sabihin... Um, wait lang, let me check this. Let me check. Okay. So, mukhang ganun talaga yung problem natin. Okay, what do we have to do now? 1 million yung ating notes payable. Okay? This is now payable in 3 equal annual installments. So, you have to remember... January 1, 2018 natin siya in issue. So, kailan siya babayaran? So, normally, the payments would be December 31, 2017 up until 2019. So, may payment ng 2017, may payment ng 2018, and may payment ng 2019. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, uh, anong sabi? Wait lang, wait lang. Ako'y medyo naguguluhan. Okay, luminaw na siya sa akin. Luminaw na siya. Ang sabi dito, the trial balance represents the amount of notes payable after the second payment has been made. So, ibig sabihin, guys, dalawang beses na siyang nakabayad. Okay, kasi... It represents the amount of notes payable after the second payment has been made. E, ilang payments ba yung gagawin? Diba, tatlo? So, ibig sabihin, after daw bayaran ng pangalawa, yan na lang daw yung natitira. Yung 1 million na ito, okay, yan na lang yung natitira. So, what can we assume? We can assume na since ang sabi, in three equal annual installments, okay, we can assume na since 1 million na lang to, Okay? Ibig sabihin, yung first two payments, parehong 1 million yun. Okay? 1 million was paid on December 31, 2017. And 1 million was paid on December 31, 2018. Okay? So, itong 2019, actually, babayaran pa lang to. 
babayaran pa lang to ngayon. So, dapat, alisin na rin natin to. Kasi mababayaran, ba, mababayaran na natin siya. But, guys, you have to remember that may interest yan. Okay, you have to remember that from January 1 up until December 31, 2019, ang utang natin is 1 million. Okay? So, anong, anong ngayon mangyayari dyan? So, PRT. Okay, principal, 1 million times times how many percent ngayon? Times 5%. 5% times 1 year. So, 12 over 12. So, dito natin yan. 1 million times 0.05. Okay. Ay, manyari. Mali. 1 million times 0.05. Okay, that is 50,000. So, yun muna guys, ang ating... Ira record Okay, adjusting entry. <clears throat> Letter H, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, remember, hindi tayo masaya. Kasi tayo yung natubuan ng interest. So, we have here interest, expense. Okay? And, ngayon, the second question here is, binayaran ba natin yung interest on this date? Now, balik tayo sa problem. Um, okay, it is said that interest is to be paid along with these installments. So, guys, yung kanina dito, di ba, ito, December 31, 2017, December 31, 2018, and December 31, 2019, magbabayad tayo ng tigwa 1 million. Okay? And along with that 1 million, kasama doon yung interest. So, ibig sabihin, as of 2019, babayaran na natin itong interest natin. Okay? So, imbis na interest payable, hindi na. Kasi, we are going to pay it then and there. Credit cash. 50,000. 50,000. And of course, guys, we have to record the payment for the notes payable. Since babayaran na natin siya ngayon eh. Tama ba? Okay? So, we have to debit notes payable and we have to credit cash for 1 million pesos. Okay? So, yun na yun. Ah, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Last 2018 lang nabigay. Okay, this is ma uh, medyo mali ako dito ah. Medyo mali ako sa amount. Pero tama naman tayo dito. Tama tayo dito. Wait lang. I'm going to have to erase this. Okay, check nyo lang to guys ha. Uh, mali tayo sa amount. Why? Nagkamali ako ng basa. Um, ang nangyari here is, ang sabi, 2018 mo pala in-issue. Okay? That was, that was my bad. So, kung gagawin natin... Um, let's check here. This one here should be 27, 2018 up until 2020. Okay? So, January 1 to December 31, 2020, 1 million daw ang binabayad. So, guys, ito yung number of payments natin. Remember, 3 equal annual installments. Ibig sabihin, ang binabayad every year is equal. Okay? First payment, December 31, 2018. Second payment, December 31, 2019. And then the third payment, December 31, 2020. Okay, now, ang sabi sa problem, Um, the trial balance represents the amount of notes payable after the second payment has been made. So, ibig sabihin, guys, yung bayad natin for December 31, 2019, nai-record na yun. Kaya nga, 1 million na lang yung natitira. Ibig sabihin, yung 1 million na yan, okay, yung 1 million na to, yan na lang yung babayaran natin for December 31, 2020. But, remember, guys, As of January 
20 up uh, as of uh, from January 1 2019 to December 31 2019 ang utang natin is hindi 1 million it is 2 million okay paano nangyari yun look at this um itong 1 million na nakita nyo dito this one is for is one this one is the payment for 2020 okay and once again, sinabi na the payment is to be made in three equal annual installments. Okay? Uh, tignan nyo dito. Um, yung 1 million na to, this is for 2020. This is just one installment. Ibig sabihin, yung 2019 and 2018, okay, yun yung... I mean, yung 1 million auto equal siya sa payment for 2019 and sa payment for 2018. Ibig sabihin, yung payment natin for 2018 is 1 million. Payment natin for 2019 is also 1 million. Okay. Now, bibilangin na natin kasi yung, uh, yung time ng interest. Okay? So, ang bibilangin natin is from January 1 to December 31, 2019. Magkano yung utang natin nung January 1, 2019? The answer is 2 million. Why? Kasi originally, ang utang natin is 3 million. Utang natin originally is 3 million. After the first payment, which, which was on December 31, 2018, nabawasan yon by 1 million. Ibig sabihin, starting January 1, 2019, up until December 31, 2019, ang utang natin is 2 million. Okay? So, ang principal natin here should be 2 million times 5% times 12 over 12. So, that should be, so, dodoblehin lang natin yon times 0.05. Okay, 100,000 dapat. Okay? So now, sa adjusting entries tayo, interest expense, 150,000, nabanggit ko na kanina kung bakit cash, kasi babayaran naman natin agad. Okay. And now, hindi na natin kailangan mag-record ng ganito. Hindi na. Why? Because sinabi sa problem, guys, na um, the interest, ay hindi, ang sabi dyan, the trial balance represents the amount of notes payable after the second payment has been made. Remember, the second payment is on December 31, 2019. So, ibig sabihin, na-record niya na yun. Okay? Ibig sabihin, na-record niya na yun. So, kailangan na, na hindi na natin siya kailangan i-record. Okay? So, ito lang ang record natin for letter H. Now, let's go to letter I. Okay? Okay. 75% of unearned revenue has already been performed by the company as of year end. Okay? So, 75% daw as of year end na perform na. So, saan tayo titingin? Of course, tingin tayo sa trial balance here. So, 75% nito, of course, na perform na daw. Ibig sabihin, 25% na lang yung dapat na matitira dito. Remember, guys, unearned income is a liability which is payable through the performance of services or the sale of goods. Since na-perform na natin yung 75% niya, mababawasan na rin siya. So, calculate 350,000 times 0.75, we have 262,500. So, the adjusting entry there would be uh, letter I, debit on earned income, and then credit service income for okay 262,500 Okay, so yan lang yun. Yan lang yung letter I natin. That's all. Punta tayo ngayon sa letter J. Okay? So letter J Ah, uh, wait lang. Yan. So, the following were unrecorded as of year-end. So, these are all expenses. So, kailangan lang natin siyang i-record. Kayang-kaya natin yan, guys. Sobrang kakayanin natin to. Okay? So, letter J. Saan na yun? Ito, letter J. 
So, ang una natin is payment of 65,000 for the salaries of employees. So, hindi daw yan na record. So, all we have to do is to simply record. Okay? So, binayaran daw natin. Payment. So, mawawalan tayo ng pera. We have to do is debit salaries expense and then credit cash for 65,000 pesos. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa pangalawa. The bill from Meralco and PLDT totaling 15,500 remained unpaid. So, hindi din ito na-record and since hindi pa natin nababayaran, we have to record utilities payable. So, the correct entry here would be debit utilities expense and then since hindi pa nababayaran, we debit utilities payable. Okay? That is 15,500. Okay. Now, lastly, payment of taxes amounting to 27,500. So, ang gagawin natin dyan is, since binayaran daw, taxes and licenses, debit, and then credit cash. For how much was that again? Okay. 27,500. So, this should do it for our adjusting entries. Yan na yun. Ito na yung adjusting entries, guys. So, now, what we have to do is, um, what? Okay. Medyo na wala ito. Ayan. Okay. Wala nang iba. Okay. So, next step, since tama na tayo sa adjusting entries, ipasok na natin siya sa T-account. So, debit AR, credit cash, 150. I think we already done that. Okay, debit AR, 150. Credit cash. O, yun. Hindi ko nalagay yung credit cash na 150. So, ilalagay ko siya ngayon. Next is, debit salaries expense, 27,000. Credit cash, 27,000. So, debit salaries expense, nasa na yun? Ito. 27,000. Okay, and then credit cash, 27,000. Next is debit supplies, 3,000. Credit cash, 3,000. Debit supplies, 3,000. Credit cash, 3,000. Okay. Next, letter D. Debit bad debts expense, 36. I think nagawa na natin to. Dito na ba siya? Okay, here it is. Debit bad debts expense, 36. Credit allowance for bad debts, 36,000. So, we're done with that. Letter E. Supplies expense, debit, 57,000. So, I think wala pa tayong nagagawang ganun. Meron na ba? Supplies expense, wala pa. So, gawa tayo ngayon ng T-account for supplies expense. Supplies expense. Kano nga yun? 57,000. So, debit 57,000. And then, we credit supplies 57,000. Okay? You're following me. Following me, ah. So, guys, remember, if medyo nahuhuli, masyado mabilis, you can pause, rewind, and then catch up. Okay? Letter F tayo ngayon. Debit insurance expense. So, I think we have to create a new T-account for that. So, ito. Go ulit tayong bago. Insurance expense. For 50,000. So, that is 50,000. Debit. And then, credit. Credit prepaid insurance na 50,000. Okay. Next one we have here is depreciation expense. I think we have to create another T account for that one. Okay. So yeah, kailangan nga. So ito depreciation expense. This is two fifty thousand debit and then credit tayo ngayon ng accumulated depreciation na two fifty thousand. Okay. Next one we have here interest expense. So bago na naman to one fifty thousand and then credit cash one fifty thousand. 
So, once again, create another one. Interest, expense, 150,000. How about Yes. And then, credit, cash, na 150,000. Okay. Next, we have letter I. Unearned income, debit. Unearned income, 262,500. Credit service income, 262,500. So, on debit, unearned income, 262,500. Credit, service income, dito yun. Okay, 262,500. Okay, konti na lang. Uh, okay, yung, lastly, yung tatlo na. Yung tatlo. So, debit, salaries, expense, credit, cash, 65,000. Debit, salaries, expense, 65,000. Then, credit, cash, 65,000. Then, debit, utilities, expense, credit, utilities, payable, 15,500. Um, asa na tayo dito? Utilities expense, where are you? Ito. 15,500 and then credit utilities payable, wala pa siya dito yon. So, this is for liabilities. So, gawa akong bago. Utilities payable. Credit yon. So, 15,500. Guys, by, by the way, kung mapapansin nyo, Pinagsama-sama ko. These are all assets. These are all liabilities. These are equity accounts. And then, these are the income and expense accounts. So, normally, pinaghihiwalay ko din tong income and expense. So, um, what I'm trying to say is, kapag gagawa kayo ng T-accounts, pag nagsusolve kayo, try nyo na siyang pagsama-samahin. Pagsama-samahin mo yung mga asset na T-accounts, liab na T-accounts, equity na T-accounts, income na T-accounts, and expense na T-accounts para mas madali. Kasi minsan tinatanong, how much are total assets? So, kapag medyo magulo yung pagkakagawa mo ng T-accounts mo, medyo jumbled, hahanap-hanapin mo pa siya. Unlike kung magkakasama na lang, it would be much more easier on your part. Okay? So, last one here we have, taxes and licenses, 27,500. Debit. So, where is that? Yon. 27,500. Ano to? And then, credit, 27,500 on cash. Okay? Tama ba yun? Okay, now we're done. Okay na tayo. Nagawa na natin lahat ng hinihingi sa atin for this problem. Okay? Nagawa na. So now, we have, what we have to do is, we have to Total. Okay? So, ang gagawin ko lang dito, guys, um, for the assets, of course, add ko yung debit and then minus ko yung credit. So, ito ah, dapat marunong kayo mag-excel. Nako! Susumbong kayo, kayo sa mga entrep nyo. Ay, sa mga mtech nyo, pag di nyo to alam. Okay? Yan. And then here, okay, yan na yun. Yan na rin yun. So, some of this minus this one. Uy! Ako pala yung mali. Okay, ganito na lang. Uh, this one plus this one minus this one. Yan. And then, this one minus this one. Okay. Ah, yung equipment, hindi pa natin alam. Pero, dadating din tayo dyan. Uh, sige. So, this one, we just have to add this and this. Okay. So, speaking of the equipment, mukhang kaya na natin siyang isolve. Okay? So, balik muna tayo sa problem natin. Ha? Okay. So, letter G. The equipment was purchased on July 1, 2017. 
had a salvage value of 250,000 and a useful life of 10 years. So, ganito lang yan, guys. Remember, um, dito, nakuha na natin yung 250,000 per year. Okay? 250,000 per year. The equipment is usable for 10 years. So, all we have to do is, okay, all we have to do is what? We have to simply multiply 250,000 by 10. So, 250,000 times 10. Okay. We get 2.5 million. But, you have to remember that um, meron siyang salvage value na 250k. So, dito sa amount na nakuha natin, dito sa 2 million 500,000, ito yung for 10 years. Pero, remember guys, ito yung depreciable amount. We have to add here the salvage value. Okay? So, all you have to do is to find the formula. Formula lang naman. Kung gusto nyo, ilagay natin dito. Sige. Baka mas, ma, baka mas madalian kayo eh. So, this is the cost. Tama ba to? Cost is equal to ah uh, wait lang. Paano ba mag-insert dito ng formula? Wait lang ah. Give me a sec. Medyo nagahang yung computer ko. Mm. Okay. Nagpaturo na ako nito kay Sir Jet nyo. Medyo nakalimutan ko lang. <laughs> Sorry Jet. Anyway, sige. Ganito na lang. So, cost is equal cost is equal to uh, sorry, sorry. Accumulated depreciation or depreciation per year is equal to cost minus salvage value divided by estimated useful life in years. So, kung gagawin natin yan, guys. Tignan nyo to, ha. 250,000 yung depreciation per year. Okay? This is equal to cost minus salvage val cost minus 250,000 divided by uh, 10 years. So, ganito magiging itsura niyan. Nag-substitute lang ako, pero ganyan yan. So, anong kailangan natin gawin? We have to multiply both sides by 10 para ma-cancel out natin yung 10 years dito. So, this will be 2.5 million is equal to cost minus 250,000. Oh, what will then happen? 2.5 million transpose plus 250,000 equals the cost. So, your cost will be 2,750,000. So, yan yung ginawa ko dito sa calculator kanina. Okay, so kailangan nyo lang mag-algebra talaga. Okay, in-apply na natin, guys. Ito yung straight line method na tinuro ko sa inyo. Yan yung depreciation is equal to cost minus salvage value over estimated useful life in years. Okay? So, you just have to simply substitute and then transpose, transpose lang. Derive. You have to derive. So, 2750, pwede na natin yun ilagay sa ating T-account. 2750. Okay. So, wait lang. Kung nakita na natin to, pwede na natin tong lagyan. 2,750,000. Okay? Kumpleto na yung debit natin. Tama? So, pwedeng-pwede na natin makuha to. How much is the sum of debits? Okay. Siyempre, guys, yung sum ng debit, yun din yung magiging sum ng credit. Tama? So, Ito, kailangan siya yung magiging balancing figure for your capital. Okay? So, gagawin natin dyan is 8716500. minus lang natin lahat. Minus 16.5. Minus 3.75. Minus 7.50. Minus 1 million. Minus 3.50. Minus 1475, we will get, okay, we will get a capital of 
20,000. So, ito yung uh, unadjusted capital. So, since inayos na natin yan, ayusin na rin natin yung T-accounts natin. 4,750. Okay? So, that being said, okay, tuloy na lang natin yung nagtototal-total na tayo. Kuha na natin yung equipment. This one will be brought down here. And then, okay, accounts payable, hindi gumalaw. Notes payable, hindi rin gumalaw. Unearned income, ito, gumalaw to. So, this minus this. Okay. Utilities payable, ito yung adjustment. So, bring down. Capital, walang, move, uh, walang movement. Drawing, simply bring down as well. Okay. And then, I thought, service income, I have to simply add the two. Utilities expense, same, simply add the two. Okay, alam nyo na to, alam nyo na to guys. So, what I want you to do is, I want you to solve. Gusto ko, after nyo mapanood tong instructional video na to, you try to solve the problem by your own. Okay lang kahit medyo alam nyo na. Kahit may idea na kayo, it's still important na ma-solve nyo siya. Kasi familiarity yan eh. Kasama yan sa familiarity. Okay? So, depreciation expense. Interest expense. I think that's it. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is, let's create a new trial balance. So, gawa tayo ng bagong sheet. Copy. So, pangalanan natin to ng Adjusted TB. So, alisin ko na to lahat. Uy! Okay. So, lahat muna nang nandito guys, ayusin natin. Okay? So, ang cash now is, should be, ito, 2757. So, so this should be the amount in the Adjusted TB. So, palitan natin yan. AR should be 700. Palitan natin yan. Uh, allowance for bad debt should be 52.5. Palitan. Supply should be 73. Palitan. Prepaid insurance should be 150. Palitan. Then, the uh, equipment should be 2750. So, I think that's the same. Accumulated depreciation should be 625. So, dapat ito. Okay? And then, accounts payable. I think hindi naman gumalaw. Accounts payable, 750. Notes payable, 1 million. Okay, unearned income, gumalaw to. Okay, right here. And then, mukhang kailangan natin magsingit. So, add, insert cells. So, we just simply copy the format. Okay, dapat alam nyo to, ha? Okay, alam nyo dapat yan. Excel. Utilities, payable. Uh, has a credit balance of 15,500. Okay. Okay. Next, we have capital drawing. Hindi naman gumalaw. Okay, ito. Medyo gumalaw itong mga to. Service income. Capital drawing, hindi gumalaw. Capital drawing, service income. Gumalaw. Utilities expense. Gumalaw. Mm, salaries expense. Gumalaw din. Taxes and licenses. Gumalaw. Okay, nadagdag na lang itong mga to. So, meron tayong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 na accounts na idadagdag. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, add. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, dapat ito nandito ito. 
Okay, dyan na lang yan. So, ano-ano nga yung mga yun? Bad debts expense, supplies expense, bad debts, supplies, insurance, depreciation, interest. So, bad debts expense, supplies expense, insurance expense, depreciation expense, and then prepay, oh no, no, sorry, interest expense. Okay, so, copy. 36, 57, 50, 250, and lastly, 150. Okay? So, anong nangyari? Bakit ganun? So, guys, ito, moment of truth. Siyempre, dapat mag-balance ang debit sa credit. So, mukhang, mukhang tingnan natin. Just for safety. Okay. This one, dapat mag-balance din. Okay. So, balance naman sila, guys. Okay. So, hanggang dun na lang tayo. So, if ever na, normally, ito yung mga pwedeng itanong sa inyo eh. How much is the adjusted balance of the following? Okay, how much are total assets? Sige, para lang masatisfy din natin. Okay, ayan. Ito na yung total. Total assets, ito siya. Equals, so, syempre, uh, wait lang ah. So, this plus... Ah, alam ko na, alam ko na, alam ko na. Sum of this, this until here, minus the sum of this one, this two. Oba. Yeah, I think tama naman. So, titignan na lang natin. Liabs should be total liabilities. Kunin lang natin para may ano kayo. Yan. And then, equity should be this here. So, some of this and minus the sum of Okay, so pag inad naman natin tong dalawa, magi-equal naman yata siya sa 57525. Okay. So this is it. So pag tinanong sa inyo how much is total assets, total liabilities, total equity, so net profit na din, sige tanong na rin natin. How much is net income? Okay, anong magiging sagot? So, ito siya. Service income. Sorry. Uh, this one. Service income minus the sum of the expenses. Okay, 299,500. So, here, you have the answers, guys. So, hopefully, once isolve nyo siya ulit, Uh, once you solve the problem, you find the same answers as we did here in this video. Okay, so you just have to practice. Practice lang ng practice after answering this exercise. Try to answer from your books, from any possible exercise that you can. Okay? If you have any questions, feel free to comment or to message me. Alam nyo naman yung Facebook or yung siguro yung sa mga students ko, alam nyo naman yung number. Nasa binigay ko naman sa respective presidents yung number ko. So, good luck guys. Um, I know you're going to ace your exams next week. So, kailangan nyo lang talaga mag-aral. Mag-aral and mag magdasal. Okay, so, sige, I guess that will end our instructional video.